Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's video of what's been going on in the last stream. So we're out here at the moment on Kothar, this is Mike's planet, and this is where we've been um, developing Iridium. And Mike is very, very proud because he's finally got through all of this nonsense that you can see here and finally managed to get the Iridium um, processing up and running. Now, some of the... Uh, proportions might be a little out of whack, as we can see here, with the um, with, with the amount of blast cake that's coming through on the on, on this belt in the middle and flowing into the um, in, into the furnaces here, which apparently require ten of those to come in plus five pyroflux, sure, um, in order to make an iridium ingot. Um, but I mean, the blast cakes are coming in, the iridium is being made and flowing down. <laughs> He's got four red belts to take out the one a day that's coming out of here and then but he's made there's quite a lot in here i'm not going to be too rude about it. he's made 5800 so far so that is certainly going and it's been then, then being fed down to the uh, usual array of delivery cannons which will be appointed at norbit and then anywhere else where it turns out to be needed later on but so far just norbit uh, and this and this this iridium is going to be very very important for doing all of the material sciences as you can see from here you need the iridium plates to straight up make the make the material science packs and i think it's quite likely that at least some of these are going to require um, iridium to make the uh, to do the uh, to make to make the yeah, air like this one will will require will require iridium to make the uh, the test data that uh, that you need to then make the pack and also they all require the material testing packs if i remember correctly you can you can either make them out who we say you see plastic iron copper rare metals and imosite which is an awful lot or oh absolutely nothing else that is the only recipe for it there isn't an alternative one that uses iridium okay so that's going to be another big drain on the imosite crystal. So it's a good thing I managed to, I bumped up the amount of imosite that's being delivered to uh, to Taishikut and to then be delivered to Norvis. But as I was saying in uh, yesterday's video, uh, I'm going to be, I think I'm going to need to stop off on Taishikut on my way to Norbit in order to uh, increase the rate that we can produce the the imosite at, because at the moment it's it's kind of woeful. It's this very very slight trickle. If we have a look at Norvis orbit. We can see down here that we've actually got enough imosite crystals. There's there's 619 of them in there, but we have absolutely no imosite plates. That's all got used up. If we, if we look down this belt, okay, there's a, there is actually a little bit on here, and, uh, to be, and it's waiting waiting to be made into the um, into whatever these these cards are called optimization research data. So it's kind of happening, but it is a bit. It's it's kind of, it's kind of slow. It, it, it it's it's struggling, and when, when when we do any sort of research that actually requires this data, then the system will just sort of grinds to a halt and we, we just don't have enough coming through and if we have a look on Taishikuten we'll see that the problem here is no long it, it was previously that we didn't have enough um, enough raw imosite being brought in here but, but because these mines ran out and Tristan wasn't able to ship it out fast enough because he wasn't making enough uh, spare delivery cannon capsules but now we can see there's actually plenty of that and so the limiting factor now seems to be how quickly we can turn the uh, this, this imosite powder into imosite fluid, imosite sulfide, and then pass it on to the next stages. Um, and both, I think if I remember correctly, we have um, both this one and... Oh yeah, I, I, I see, yes. It gets, so it gets turned into the... It gets powdered sulfide... To, to, it gets turned into powder. Let's, let's look at the names of these. Crushed imosite, which turns into imosite sulfate, sulfide, which turns into imosite powder. And then the imosite powder will go both into this machine and this machine. So that'll be made into both the crystals, uh, which takes eight of them. and uh, Oh, and the sulfide as well. Okay, that's a bit greedy. And over here, where we can start making the plates. But that requires 32 powder. So there's a lot more powder required over on this side, which is probably, given this sort of the roughly 50-50, uh, well, in fact, the actually 50-50 way we're splitting it here. Um, well, it would be 50-50, except this one seems to be full, so it's all going across this way. Um, but yes, anyway, the, the the way that we're trying to split it there, this requires a lot more of it to make each individual plate. So we have a lot more crystals going down here than we do plates. Um, and then down at the bottom here, <clears throat> that's all being fed into the delivery cannons way down here and shipped off to uh, Norvis and Norbit. And so eventually, you know, in theory, eventually we'll have enough of all of those. But it, there's there's a lot 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 of um, a lot of insufficiency around here. I would also quite like to increase the amount of nitric acid we're producing because I think that is also a limiting factor. As you can see, this 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 bit is stopped, um, and that's being fed up here. Okay, yeah. So. The reason we've got such a backlog here is because it's this stage that's causing the problem because of insufficient nitric acid. And there's insufficient nitric acid probably because, oh no, there's quite a lot of mineral water, it's because there's only one machine in here at the moment. So I could give this a quick bump uh, remotely by just going, uh, let's have another of these. Well, actually we're going to need to do quite a lot of piping with all of this. Um, this appears to be a shortage as well, actually. The um, 
the there isn't there isn't enough of the uh, ammonia being made because we don't have enough hydrogen coming through. So actually, I'll need another one of these. There's quite a lot. Basically, what I'm trying to say is there's quite a lot of expansion required here before we can have enough nitric acid, before we can have enough plates, before we can have enough of everything, all of the emicide stuff coming through in order to keep everything happy. But that's a massive digression because we were talking. We were trying to talk about the about Mike's um, iridium production over here, and yes, as I say, that is that is going. We are we are producing some of it. That is indeed some. Uh, so as we've seen before, this is produced from the blast cake, which is produced from the I don't know pow powdered, which is produced. So the, the the belts flow around all over the place. But the problem at the moment seems to very much be that there isn't enough input coming in. So he's got he's got his mining drill. Uh, chugging away here merrily that's feeding out onto the belt here uh, that's being pulverized ah here we go the, a, a train has just arrived and dropped off a, a, a quantity of the imocyte core fragments um, that's all getting depleted fairly quickly this is going to be a fairly familiar sight to you guys having having watched uh, the same sort of things happening with the vulcanite yesterday but that's getting pumped in over here it's all getting processed so we've got enough machines down here more than enough machines down here to process all of that imocyte as it comes through um, to make to make the the, the actual sorry to make to the imicite core to make the the, the imicite that comes up this way, um, they don't seem to produce all that much. So we've got a full belt coming in here, and we've got a fraction of a belt coming out on the other side. So that's a bit stingy, should we say? But it does. But it is producing at least some of it, which is then going up here and getting spread out between all of these machines. I think. I think it's fair to say that Mike is somewhat overbuilt for this uh, for this system. <laughs> I don't know whether he's looked at the numbers of um, of so if we if we did have a well actually he's got he's got a single input belt here being split into four, uh, which is a little unnecessary. I suspect this belt could probably we could probably remove these uh, splitters here and just feed this one straight into here and into this and just into this bank and it would probably be more than capable of keeping up. Um, but still, I mean, it, we'll call it future-proofing. It means you can put in another bank of these, and another, and another, and another, um, and then eventually have four belts coming up here and going into the back of this system, and then balancing it over here as well, uh, and just keep all of these machines um, in, 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 in with... Keep all of these machines supplied with some imicite. But that is definitely going to be some way off, because at the moment, well, as you can see, this is quickly running out over here. Uh, we're going to have a we're going we're going to run out here fairly soon, and then it's just not going to not going to run as nicely. Although having noticed actually now that all of these machines now that there's been a, a full red belt coming in for quite a while, we can see that actually it is saturating the belt, saturating the machines along here. They are all working quite hard. I'm not sure why he's using blue inserters rather than uh, green ones, but never mind. Um, and then there is and actually this belt is now full, so. Okay, I mean that makes that makes a certain amount of sense because you put 20 in and you get 16 plus one plus naught to four out. So, I mean that's that's going to actually that's going to average at just under 20. I, I'd, I'd say, assuming the naught to four is going to be an average of two. Um, but still, it does seem that some of these inserters are having trouble unloading. So maybe that's not quite so true. But it, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it looks like this is actually balanced for the for the full red belt coming in. And then we are getting a full belt coming out here, pretty much of the inner side once we've stripped out the uh, the cores and the and the stone. So up here, uh, the the system is now running a little bit quicker. I mean, he's still going to need um, another four times this, or maybe three times this, because we've got we can see here we've got these first two rows of machines running here, although these ones aren't running quite constantly. So maybe maybe yeah maybe, maybe quadrupling this will be sufficient. Um, I'm not sure where he's going to put another four rows of these uh, of these pulverizers, but maybe he can. Oh yes, I've worked out why this is over, over, overfilling because we had the full belt coming in, and then we have it 18, 19 um, per process coming out. But because we've got an extra boost of 24% productivity, that's actually going to be more like 25 coming out. So no wonder it's a bit over. No wonder it's a bit over full. Um, yes, but now 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 the uh, now the imicite uh, core chunks have run out from here. We can we can empty all that buffer out here and just keep keep the system running nicely and until it's. Sort of Comes, cut until it's all, all flowed through, and we'll see how much how much um, I, I, iridium we get out of that. And I've said emicide a few times when I meant iridite. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is this is the system. So Mike has what, what else has he done around here? So the, the the big thing is that he started making iridium. It, it's a slow process at the moment, but it does look quite expandable. And the the way of expanding it is going to be basically putting in more core mining stations. So he's got one up here. Um, so he's got two core mining drills at the moment, and we re and I'm, I'm suggesting that he's going to need at least, well, in order to keep these machines happy, he's going to need four times as much iridite coming through, um, and that means he's going. Well, these are not running at 
quarter a quarter of the uh, these are not running all the time so he's going to need to at least i don't know i reckon he's going to need to multiply it by about 16 times which means 256 times so that means he's going to need to put out another 510 mining drills in order to get this system running at full speed off the off the core mining alone alternatively he could do what i've ended up uh, resorting to on the whole uh, on the vulcanite planet and just going out and dealing with some and mining some of these patches and just digging up iridite straight and at that point he would then not need to do the um who bypass this stage and will be able to feed that iridite that he mined straight in over here. So potentially that would get around the difficult stage. Um, whether he wants to do it like that or whether it, whether it'd be nice to stick with the um, with the mainly mainly doing it from core fragments, I, I guess that's up to Mike. He's going to have to decide which way around he'd prefer to do that. But either way, we. Um, it, this, this will probably be enough to get us going on the material sciences, but in the future I suspect we're going to need a boost to this. Um, if we're lucky, we'll be able to get to the point where we can where we can boost it when when we stop needing delivery cannon capsules, and then maybe that'll mean that we won't need to worry quite so much about doing all of the core mining in order to get the ingredients up for the delivery cannon capsules. We can just go for these these patches and and and, uh, and mine them up as 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 is traditional. Mike says he's added in additional stone shenaniganery, uh, so stone pickup and stone drop off stations. Uh, there's presumably the drop off is. Oh, I don't know. There's another stone drop-off. Oh, there's a stone drop-off up here, which is going presumably into pulverizers here, yes, and then to make the uh, uh, to turn the, the the vulcanite that I'm shipping over into pyroflux because that's needed for at least one of the steps. He's worked on his dirty water cleaning. Is that up here? Yes, it is. So presumably it's the byproducts that are coming out of here, I, I guess. So he's, he's, he's hand, handling these better, apparently. Um, unless it's the dirty water that's coming out down here. Um, Ah, oh, this is probably it, yeah. So he's making stone out of these and also copper. Okay, no, it won't ground to all because what he's done, he's done something slightly better than that. He switched these over to the rest of the, uh, the uh, dirty water cleaning that produces raw rare metals because he's using raw rare metals somewhere. So he's got a another belt of doom going all the way up, blimey, all the way up here and over into... over here to where he's going to be trying to make... He's making the... Um, the raw rare metals along here that can then be shipped out along this belt and up into here where he's going to be making them into the nitric acid. That's similar to what I was talking about over on Taishikutan actually because it gets obviously you need the raw, raw rare metals to make, make, make the uh, nitric acid along with the uh, mineral water. He's also got a delivery cannon chest for bringing more of those in if necessary. Um, this doesn't seem to be hooked up to anything yet. Um, I have to imagine that means he's probably not getting any delivered, but this is just in case in the future he discovers he needs more, uh, more, raw, more rare metals than he's actually getting brought in. Um, if we look over here, how yeah, the supply seems to be, it seems to be keeping up okay. He's got 863 stock, stockpiled in this chest, but this one at least is getting shorter. I, uh, yeah, he's probably going to be okay. Still bringing in the uh, mineral water by um, by barrel and delivery cannon, which is absolutely horrible, but it does seem to have settled down, so at least it is capable at the moment. Um, it's horrible, but, you know, sometimes sometimes you just have to. It, that we couldn't come up with any better ideas for this system, unfortunately. He's also improved his uh, defensive wall by putting in more filters on the belt, apparently. So there's um, presumably there were, there were insufficient of them before. I I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't I didn't see it being a problem. Uh, where's the the end of it where the dirty ones get taken out and the clean ones get passed on? So yeah, over here. Um, nope. Oh, what? Oh, I see. This is where they're getting swapped over. Yeah, okay. So the dirt for some reason it's passing on the dirty ones over there to be dealt with elsewhere. But this is this is the bit that's passing through the uh, the clean filters at, at what he considers to be an appropriate rate. So um, that's fine. It's going through all the way through all of this. Oh, good grief. Oh no, no, wait, no, it's not doing that. This is just a this is just a bypass to get the dirty filters out. To get, sorry, to get past clean filters down to go down to be passed through the uh, the, the power generation area. The uh, filters are still being passed on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever to goodness knows where. Uh, that looks like a bit of funny, funny business going on here. Here we go. Right, so he's increased the rate slightly at which he's passing out the filters along here because apparently there weren't enough. Although that said, there still seems to be quite a lot of clean filters coming back in. So maybe it wasn't quite as bad as he thought. Or, I, I don't know. Anyway, either way, it seems the, sy the system seems to be working in, in general. So um, we won't uh, criticise it too much. I'm trying to work out what's going on up here. Oh, I see. So having them coming round on the outside means that he's got slightly more going through here each time the belt moves, I think. No. No, that's not true. It's just... Yeah, it's just slightly different. Anyway, he's uh, he's got them going out at this rate rather than apparently the rate he had them going out before. Either, either of them, seems, it seems like it would probably have been sufficient. 
He's put in a. He, he says rather embarrassingly he forgot to put in a a train to go out and get the core fragments. So we had just building up over, building up and up and up over here, and not being collected. But as you saw earlier, there is now a core fragment train that's going out to get them. Mike has been saying that he is finished on this planet, and Mike has got this planet to about the same sort of position I had Talos at, which I shall show you in a few minutes, where it is producing the uh, resource required from that planet, but at quite a slow rate because it's only got a relatively small number of uh, core miners go going to in order to produce all, all the bits and pieces that are needed for it. So, yes, it is it is working, but it's producing the... I, I can't even find the Iridium, there's so little of it. Uh, producing the Iridium at quite a slow rate, but which is... I mean, that is fine for now, because at the moment we're not using it. So it makes sense to just build up a little bit of a stockpile, start using it, and then when we start to run out, we can come out here again with more... probably more advanced modules, more advanced this, that, and the other, more advanced weapons, better, potentially and push the biters back a bit further it'll make it a bit easier to get some more core fragments uh, core fragment processing up and running and potentially it'll make it easier to go out and get some of uh, the traditional style mines that's a 27 million iridite in that mine up there that's a lot um there's another one 7.6 over here and so on you can see that there's a lot around here uh, re ready for the ready for the pickings um so you can get out, start mining that up, and put, put it into the into the midpoint on his machine. So actually, looking at it that way, you can consider consider this everything that's on screen at the moment: the um, delivery cannon capsule production here, and the um, and the crushing of the core fragments here, to be just a sort of a, a, a temporary system until we get to the point where we're ready to do start doing straight iridite mining and bringing that in over here. So maybe that maybe maybe that's what he's been thinking. I wouldn't like to say. I might be putting thoughts into his brain or words into his mouth. But um, that looking at it that way, that makes a certain amount of sense. Finally, while we're looking at this planet, I would like to acknowledge that I uh, I decided I did I did a little bit of science, and this time I didn't shoot Mike with a delivery cannon. I tried shooting a biter nest with a delivery cannon just to see what would happen. And uh, this this is just glass. Uh, these are um, because I had I had loads and loads of this being shipped out from um, Agnea while I was out there playing around and trying to get the uh, get the vulcanite processing up and running at a decent speed. So I thought I'd drop a couple of them on this on this spitter spawner here, and they took off like ten percent of its health each time. So they are incredibly undamaging. They do almost no, virtually no damage when you drop them on on uh, biter biter spawners, which is um, a bit disappointing. But it was worth trying just for fun, and it, uh, yeah, as you can see, not a great deal of damage. Ooh, the uh, spitters are on the biters are on the move. What are they doing? They're collect, co gathering up in, a, in, 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 a, in on this iridite patch, having a bit of a think, and they're just going for a wander. It seems to be away from the base though, so we won't worry about them too much. Right, so that's Kothar. We've got um, we've got iridium coming through at a at a, 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 a non-zero rate, so that's quite nice. In fact, let's have a look. Let's let's see what sort of speed that is being produced at, and, and, and compare it to other things. If we look at ingots. Over the last hour, shall we? Should we say? Uh, so that's that's a big spike in there for the red ones. That's that appears to be uh, processed fuel. I don't know why that's shown up for a search for ingots. Um, let's just grab the ones that actually are ingots, shall we? There we go. So we've got massive quantities of copper ingots being produced. 1.6 per uh, minute, uh, which is so that's great. That's just completely spoiling the graph. So let's take them off. <laughs> got 32,000 iron ingots. So that's also spoiling the graph. And 20,000 steel. So let's get rid of that one as well. So now we're down to the, uh, the sort of the slightly more relevant ones. We've got the iridium that Mike's producing. We've got the beryllium that I'm producing, and the holmium that Tristan's producing. So actually looking at that, Mike seems to be in the lead because he's producing a whole 11.2 per minute, whereas I'm only I'm producing just under 10, and Tristan's producing just slightly less, just slightly less than just under 10. So actually. From a certain point of view, it could be argued that Mike is Mike is producing the uh, the most of the weird and exotic materials that we've got getting. He's also got the biggest swings up and down with his production, um, <laughs> because this will be presumed this is when one one of his trains comes in, and then it zeroes out for a while, and then another train comes in. Whereas Tristan and I are a bit more a bit more static. Uh, now Tristan is in, right in the middle currently of a massive expansion, so his is going to suddenly leap upwards in, in the not too distant future. The beryllium I'm not uh, not working on at the moment because, again, in the same sort of way as I was saying earlier with uh, Mike's iridium, I'm reckoning on as having a bit of a stockpile of it. We'll ship that out, we'll use it up, and when it becomes a problem, we can then go out and um, go, go out and make a lot more of it. But yeah, that's um, that's quite interesting. It makes the it puts the iridium a bit more into into perspective. So I was um, mocking him a little bit for the rate it was being produced at, but actually it's uh, it, it, it's relatively significant, or it's it's, rel it's comparable and slightly faster than the uh, than the other um, late, uh, late game metals that we're playing with. So maybe I should apologise. I probably won't, but maybe I should. So let's continue out further out into the solar system. Uh, we don't want, we don't care about uh, Taros because there's nothing happening there. Uh, we do care about Talos because that's the one that I've um, uh, done a little bit of fiddling with. 
So I've not done anything enormously major over here, um, but I did make some slight improvements. So if, if we look, um, where's, where's a re relevant place to look? Uh, yes, here we've got uh, we've now got Vulcanite as well as Cryonite being brought in by delivery cannon. Uh, that's just another delivery cannon on Agnea that's firing out here. So that's, that's simple and easy to do. And that's pouring that down down along here, over here to here, where we're making it into Pyroflux. And that requires sand as well. So I, I, I did a bit of messing around with the belts, and it's now a little bit of a nonsense, if I'm being honest, because we've got the set, the stone that's coming out here is then being, oops, is being fed into this pulverizer that's turning it into sand as fast as it can, which is then being fed in here, and here, and here. And because it's producing far more than it needs, the sand also carries on down here, and so does some of the stone, because we've got spare. It comes all the way down here. The sand goes into here to be disposed of in the traditional way. The stone carries uh, the stone. What's the stone do? The stone carries on, goes through the system, and gets spat out at the end here. In this, again, in the traditional way, because there's too much of it. And we can then have some of it goes out this way to go back up again in case we ever run out. So we've got a massive buffer on this belt, which is a bit ridiculous, but you know it kind of works. And then any spare of that will then also be pulverized in here and disposed of. And once again, the copper system seems to have jammed up. Why is this jammed up? Oh, yes. Uh, this is ridiculous and needs dealing with. So, uh, <laughs> oh dear. Right, so what happens here, I shall, de I shall demonstrate. I shall put down some belts like that. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got some modules on this belt, which is not what you want. Um, but I shall demonstrate why this, this ridiculousness has happened and why it's causing this belt to back up all the way along here and causing problems with throughput. So as the, the bots come in, they'll put, put those they'll put those in over there. We'll now get rid of this again because we don't actually want that belt, bit of belt in there, even though it's, it's, it's working somewhere to put the modules. The bots come over, they grab the modules and the belt. The belts get taken away to put somewhere sensible. The bots fly off with the modules, like this, fly all the way over the power generation area. And then they drop them off in this yellow chest here because some Muppet, i.e. me, decided it'd be a good idea to put in a yellow chest as the... Um, uh, as a chest for this to empty into, possibly because I didn't have any steel ones. I don't know. Let's see if there are any steel ones, and I'm going to fix that like that. Um, so that means then this insert. Uh, so they're brought over here because this is an empty yellow chest that doesn't have any sort of logistics filter on it. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of it's fair game for putting things in. Then this blue inserter drop, drops them out onto this belt. They go down here, down, 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 down here, as the, as you can see. Passes them all the way round here, round, 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 and this is the belt that's supposed to have stone and uh, copper ore on it from the from the dirty water cleaning process. So that means they get dumped onto here because they're stone and um, and copper. So they get dropped onto here. They come around here. They're not they're not coals. So they don't go through there. They're not stones. So they don't get pulled off there. They're not uranium or, or stone again. They're not raw rare metals. They're not iron, and they're not copper. So they don't get pulled off at any of these points. So they get up to the end of the belt here, and they just jam it up, and it's bloody stupid. So. Yeah, this is a bit of a fail. Um, I'm going to need to uh, fix that, but at least it's a fairly simple, it's a fairly straightforward fix. Um, we can, I can just literally do that and get rid, of, get rid of that. Or to be honest, at this point, I could get rid of those two and put just put in a piece, a bit of belt like that because there's no longer a massive backlog that I need to deal with. So yes, that's a um, a bit of a fail, and of course now it's going to, it's just going to happen again as the um, as the modules make their way all the way around and pass along here so I, I feel a bit silly about that but never mind we'll um, worry about that we'll, we'll, we'll worry about fixing that in the next stream so yes I've got a little bit um, on, off, off on a bit of a tangent so being able to make the pyroflux here is, it means I now have plenty of pyroflux in this pipe which is great I should probably put in a tank actually to make sure that we're using the pyroflux up that comes out of here as, as quickly as possible and we don't get a sort of a, a backlog of it building up here I don't know if we will but I want to make sure we, I want to make sure that we don't basically but that pyroflux now means I can run all of these machines along here, which are doing the pyroflux smelting process, which is significantly better because you get you put in 50 beryllium powder and 10 pyroflux to get your 250 molten beryllium, which is then turned into one beryllium ingot. Whereas down here, it takes in 100 beryllium powder, so twice as much in order to make a single ingot, and it takes in coal, which, to be honest, is a, it's a bit of, in a bit of a short supply as well. So. Essentially here, I've, I've cut off this belt here, so we're not making the beryllium using the coal recipe anymore. If we do need to boost the uh, production, I can put in a, another belt here, or I can put in some more furnaces across here. But at the moment, I'm doing it quite quite productively, because we've got the full um, uh, third plus 30% productivity on most of these machines. And, okay, this one's only got 18% um, productivity, but I ran out of modules, so, you know, what can you do? Um, one of the things I would like to do is send out a lot more modules and a lot more... Actually, one of the things I want to do is redesign this whole system so I can fill it up with speed modules and not have to worry... And then the whole system would run... And, and productivity modules as well. And then get the whole system running a bit quicker because it is rather slow at the moment. Um, 
and that would enable me to get quite a lot more uh, of, of my beryllium coming out because I've only got 1500 in there and whatever is on this belt and in these cannons. So it would be nice to, to boost this fairly significantly by putting in beacons and speed modules and just getting the whole thing running as fast as it reasonably should. So that will need a fairly major re rebuild of the whole thing and redesign and rethink in order to get the modules, the beacons in in the right places. But I don't expect it to be too hard because, let's see, I mean, for this bit here, I'll simply I'll pump all of these full of productivity modules and then put the beacons down the middle so I can put one in here, one in here, and so on. There's plenty of room between the, between these. We've done that before. For this row, I reckon I can I can spread these out a little bit and I can get them along the gap up the middle. So then the, the beacons will affect these machine these chemical plants above and these ones below. Then down here, I can have the beacons affecting these uh, chemical plants and these furnaces as well, by put, again, by stretching this gap in the middle here. And that means I don't need to worry about this piped bit here. I don't, the, 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 uh, the beacons have the range that they can reach over these belts, so that'll, that'll all work quite nicely. If I think it's worth it, I could also put speed modules in these um, casting machines. Now they they won't take uh, they won't take productivity modules, so I think it's probably not worth it. I might as well just increase the number of these machines I have because if you don't if you're not putting productivity modules in, then there's no advantage apart from a slight UPS but um, slightly less UPS impact in having um, more of the in having more machines rather than putting speed modules in them. So I can just extend those out a little bit, and that'd be fine. This bit I probably demolish because I don't. I, I'm, I then at that point I intend to not be making the uh, beryllium with this old recipe anymore. The other reason I'm, I'm saying that is because down here we actually the, these mining drills ran out of, of coal, so we have a bit of a shortage of coal, and I don't want to run out of it because it is in use down here for making the um, making the air filters, and also uh, so I put in some more mining drills across here. There's a fair amount available from these, and potentially if we start to have a crisis, I could pull up some of these. Um, uh, greenhouses and put another row of them in across the top. So there is a, a certain amount of coal available here. It's not it's not a problem yet, and we do have a full warehouse of it here. But I'm aware that at some point in the future I may start to need to worry about it a little bit because there's not enough being produced by the uh, by the core mining uh, core fragmentation process over here. So yes, there's a fairly easy and obvious upgrade path for this system once I get round to once once it's once it's needed. But I think, like I've been saying with the iridium processing, I'm not going to bother with that until we actually do need to go out there and get it set up, get it working. Until we're really actually using the iridium, and the iridium all gets used for the astro um, uh, astro uh, science. So as you see, brilliant plates goes in there. I suspect some of the uh, researches you do will require, or can uh, maybe not. I was going to say I expect some of these will use. Um, beryllium for making the infrared for making the the, the, the observation frames but apparently not um, I don't know I don't know where else it's going to be needed then but it's certainly needed in um, this step for the for the beryllium plate here so but not in but not in particularly high quantities um, it's it looks like it's one ingot will turn into 10 beryllium plates will turn into one astro science pack so here we've got enough beryllium to make 1600 um, 1600 science packs I think we should be okay with that for a while <laughs> Uh, at least that might even be enough to make spaceships. We shall see. Continuing further out into the solar system, well, we've been to we've been to Kothar. We've, we're not talking about Taras because we haven't needed to go there yet. Njord, Njord is the next place. This is Tristan's uh, Holmium planet, and. There's not been an enormous amount of change over here. It's just been continuing with what I was talking about uh, last week, and because last week, is, uh, because that is such a such a massive, massive job that it's going to take. It's taking Tristan quite a long time to expand this out outwards. So we've got a uh, we've got a, a, a station here that's unloading the. Uh, the, the core, core fragments, and then those are then being passed out. Uh, one one red belt of them is going off this way to be to go into the main processing system up there, and we've got four blue belts of them going down this way for the new processing system. So you can see how much faster that means it must be. That make it six times faster, I believe, assuming we use all of the input. So that then, all, as we were saying, all flows in here, gets pulverized down, and he's because he's got it flowing in here, it now makes it a little bit more obvious how the whole system works. We've got then we've got so we've got then the the uh, four we've got four belts of crushed uh, coming out of the top here. Uh, I don't mean crushed. I mean I just mean Holmanite coming at the top here. He's then he's then also got a, a system feeding it in from Holmanite mines, but that's a lower priority as is as it should be, as it should be as I've been talking about with uh, with other other places. So we've got that then being fed in here, and Tristan has been going in and beaconing things up properly because he's because basically because he started building this after we had beacons. I started building uh, Talos before we had beacons. So that's then fed in all the way down here. Where we've got loads, loads of pulverizers. Now you'll notice the sort of the, this is the sort of thing I was talking about with uh, Mike's planet, where you need far more of them to pulverize down the um, the the core chunks. Than 
can you do to then deal with the actual ore that's coming out of those core chunks? So Tristan doesn't need quite as many of these pulverizers. But then he's got he's got lots of them in here, stripping the stone out up here, and then <clears throat> apparently getting a massive backlog of stone, which is interesting because Tristan needs enormous quantities of stone for all of his processings. But apparently he's not got he's not got that properly turned on yet, I guess. So it's just running a little bit slowly. So eventually, though, that'll lead to lots and lots of the. Uh, Holmenite, crushed Holmenite coming around here and that can be then fed into all of the massive massive quantities of um, chemical plants down here that's a lot that's a lot of chemical plants down here um, in order to and then he's going to be needing to feed in also the, uh, the hydrogen chloride and uh, oh and the, uh, the the blue the blue anion beads as well those go around and around in a loop and he's presumably going to have a feed of those coming in from yes from up here so yes that's that, that that's lots um, and then that ships out massive, massive quantities of all of the things. And now he's got a nice, neat uh, feedback system going on here where the uh, powdered, is it powdered? Let's have a look. The holmium chloride will be stripped out here and then everything else will just be looped straight back around and back into the machine. Uh, so that's quite nice. And then the, then all of that's going to be coming up this way and the fluids are going to be got rid of by all these pumps and pipes and things. Jesus, this is this is a crazy size setup. I'm, um, I'm quite impressed by it, but it is... But the sheer scale of it is somewhat... Um, or inspiring jaw dropping as well i think personally i probably have made it as four individual systems each one running off one of these belts and put them next to each other or something like that uh, like i did with the vulcanite in fact so um yes that will then feed all this around here and then tristan has broken his pattern he's instead of going vertically with all of these he's now going horizontally because it was just getting a bit silly because for each if we, if we take a look at this each one of these outputs from here we're feeding out the how does this even work Okay, right. Yes, we're feeding each one of these belts is fed into so this, this step. Is, this step is, is still vertical. Goes into these machines, which then makes the uh, the powdered holmium. So we're to here we're turning five holmium chloride and a copper cable into ten holmium powder. So you then got huge amounts of stuff pouring out here. Um, and you then so he now needs twice as many belts going off this way. So he's decided the easiest way to do that is just going to have a belt have a belt coming out from each of these machines. And then each one of those belts requires a full row of these furnaces to produce the actual end product, the, the actual holmium, uh, the the, the uh, liquid hol the molten holmium that then goes into these into the processor here and then gets passed out along here. And at that point, all of that drops down. All of that that input that we saw over there then drops down to a single yellow belt here. Um, we, and these belts have not been all brought together yet. We'll see how many he needs in the end to uh, to put all of these together. But also, even with the uh, even with having gone horizontal for all of these things and making it a bit wider, you can see there's a enormous number of furnaces required here, which of course he's run out of. He's going to need to order more of them out from um, uh, from Norvis. But can you imagine if all of this was vertical? Just how how far down it be? Well, it would, it would fall off the edge of the planet basically. So <laughs> he's had to do something about it in order to get it to fit in there. That's a cr that is a crazily big. Um, system here producing all these uh, producing the holmium and I, I guess the idea is that this is now going to be sufficient probably to, this may well be sufficient until end game we shall see i mean that's that's quite a uh, a sweeping major statement to make but the sheer quantity he's producing here i can see that actually being enough until until we finish the year uh, and basically meaning we're never going to have to go back to this planet ever again um except perhaps to put in more mines uh so yeah, once this kicks in and starts actually running, he's going to be woefully undersupplied with core pickup stations. Even though in the last run he was actually, he was going out and putting in more of these, more and more and more and more of them. But even so, I think he's still going to discover that he doesn't that the uh, the core mining is not going to be enough. So that's why he's put in the uh, the. the the Holmenite mines that we've we've, we've seen. Uh, I can't see any off immediately, but I'm sure there are some around. Um, yeah, like this one, for example. The Holmenite pickup here, um, it's filled up the train, but the train hasn't got anywhere to go. So, yes, there are going to be... He, he might need to put in some more. This one's only got only got 19 million. But, you know, that's relatively straightforward compared to some of the other things that are required in this game. Um, yeah, he'll then pump all of that. So we reckoned it was get, that was going to multiply the amount of he was getting through by about six times, didn't we? So let's have a look at how much he's producing at the moment. Here, here we go. Um... <clears throat> Where is it? Here it is. So, yeah, even at the moment, producing six times that is still not going to be all that much holmium. Uh, it still is, is probably all going to be, absolutely all going to be fitting onto a yellow belt. Now, the other thing he's done differently, over here there are no productivity modules. Over here we've got um, tier two all the way through. So we're getting, we're getting a... 24% boost there, another 24% boost there, another... 18% boost on this stage, another 12% boost here, and there'll be another another 24%, 24% was it for the furnace? Uh, yeah, 24% on this stage as well, 
Um, and and a zero percent on this stage because you can't put them in casting machines. But even so, that's going to that's going to be a big boost. It's going to be at least a doubling, maybe a two and a half, three times multiplication. I'll put the number on screen here as usual. <laughs> um, so it's going to get a lot more out than that. So maybe it's not going to be six times as much. Maybe it's going to be eighteen times as much. However, even if it is, <laughs> I suspect this one yellow belt is still going to be sufficient. Um, but this stuff is quite dense, as I say. We you can turn each one of those into ten uh, holmium plates, and that's that's going to go a fair way. We, we, we will see later on in the game whether we need whether we need even more. But for now, this is probably going to be absolutely sufficient. But we shall see. Uh, the one run limit, the main limiting factor now, apart from sheer number of furnaces, is is the nitric acid production. So that's going to need. Uh, he's, he acknowledges that that is going to need a boost um, wherever it's done. Uh, but you know, it's it, it, work in progress. You, you can only do one thing at a time, or so, well, you can only do four things at a time, apparently. Um, so he's, once this is up and running, he can then sort of start to think about just how much nitric acid he's going to need to be pumped into it. Get it running. It'll, it'll, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I think the trickiest step might be getting the anion exchange beads running at a, a suitable, a suitable rate, because we don't seem to have any at the moment. Maybe that's just because it's turned off up here. Um, maybe that's because this is this is the step that requires nitric acid. This is the step that requires the nitric acid. So, yeah, that's why there isn't any at the moment. So yeah, some more, more, a bit more of a boost required for that. There's some construction bots. Oh, the construction bots are still building everything for him though, so that's um, well done there. Um, yes, so that's 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 Njord. It's going to be a crazy, crazy amount of holmium being going in, and a nice and a convenient trickle coming out that was, is going to be enough for a good long time, I suspect. So that brings us on to how well people have been surviving in the last uh, in the last run. So what with um, Mike being well, Mike he's died another three times, probably due, due to trying to clear biters out on uh, on on Kothar. And um, Marcus had some. Uh, Marcus now actually left Norvis and gone onto an, another planet, which is dangerous, as we talked about yesterday. He's out here on Big Rid, uh, producing um, well, start, starting to produce the 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 the, the, the vitamin melange, um, and that's meant he's had to clean out some biters. And so unfortunately for him, that's led to a few deaths. Um, I've been apparently three of them, although I can only see two off the. Uh, oh no, there's two two down here and one up here. There we go. So yeah, he's had those those three deaths. Uh, a little unfortunate, but you know he's he's established himself a nice perimeter now and is able to sort of start start working on on producing the vitamin melange. And we'll talk more about that in um, in the in the videos in, in a couple of weeks once once things are up up and actually running properly. Because um, at the moment it's it's still a little bit of a here is a sketch of what what we're starting to do. It's much more interesting to look at these things when they're actually flowing properly and there's and there's products coming out at the end of it. And that is everything I have for you for today. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the stream sponsor. That's uh, threefoil.be. If you use the code Lawrence Plays on check checkout, you can get 20% off your first month of a Minecraft or a Factorio or various other game hosting services they offer. Uh, I, th there won't be any uh, streams next week because I shall be on holiday, and so there'll also be a bit of a shortage of videos as well because, you know, I can only... Uh, I, I, I need a stream to, make, to have some stuff to talk about with the videos, and also if I'm not if I'm not here, I can't make them. So uh, I, I hope you won't miss me too much. But I shall be back the week after, and the schedule schedule will resume as normal. So everything will be everything will be carrying on as, as usual after I get back. Um, so please come along to that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.